It takes nine months for a baby to fully develop and enter the world. And for new parents, that time is often filled with uncertainty, discomfort, and anxiety. Since COVID-19 hit nine months ago, we too have experienced much of the same. Worries about health and jobs, unmet expectations of what we thought this year would be, lack of connection with loved ones, and illness. But through the Christmas story, God reminds us he is Emmanuel, God with us. He's in our stories, walks alongside us in our struggles, and offers hope in the midst of darkness. Prairie Lakes Church, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. I look forward to saying that every year at this time, but uh, there's probably not a year that I look forward to saying that more than 2020. Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. Hey, uh, this weekend at Prairie Lakes Church is one of my favorites uh, because it's the weekend we kick off our Advent Christmas series uh, that will take us right up to Christmas Eve, okay? So welcome. We're really glad that you're joining us from wherever you're joining us from. My name's Jesse. I'm one of the pastors here. And, uh, and here's what I know about you this weekend. Here's what I know. I know that you probably had kind of a weird Thanksgiving. Uh, you probably had to make some adjustments to whatever plan that you had going into it. Uh, maybe there were some people who would have normally been there with you that were not. Um, maybe your favorite Thanksgiving dish did not get shared because Aunt Sally, who was supposed to bring it, didn't come, you know. Um, I know that many of you have already had some difficult conversations, not just about Thanksgiving, but about Christmas coming up. Uh, you know, um, you're making some difficult decisions about what you're going to do. Um, we've had some tearful conversations in our house the past couple of weeks about that. And, uh, and here's what else I know. I know that if you're joining us this weekend, uh, you're not joining us from a physical campus either. You're joining us from somewhere else online, Facebook, YouTube, website, app, um, but you're just not in the room with your other friends um, worshiping together. So, 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 so here's what I bet. Here's what I bet. I bet that nine months ago, nine months ago, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, now November, almost December, nine months ago, I bet that this is not how you envision 2020 holidays to go. Um, no Aunt Sally at Thanksgiving and, and no church on site together and maybe no Christmas travel. Nine months of this stuff. Nine months of this stuff. So that's actually what we're calling our Advent series for 2020. We're calling it Nine Months. Nine months. And, and what we're going to do over the next four weeks together is we're going to retrace the journey of the folks whose lives got all upended the day that God announced the arrival of his son Jesus nine months before his birth. And uh, I think what we're going to see is it turns out the very first Christmas season w w was, uh, was even more crazy than the one we were ex experiencing here in, in, in 2020. So, so I just want to lay this out for you. Here's what the next few weekends are going to look like as we walk through our nine month series, okay? This weekend, we're going to talk about nine months of unmet expectations. Uh, next weekend, uh, nine months of, of pain. Following week, nine months of uncertainty. And then the final week before Christmas Eve, nine months of, uh, of unfaithfulness. Now, as you look at that list, okay, as you look at that list, uh, you might be doing some quick Google searching of uh, what does church online look like somewhere else, <laughs> right? Because what a depressing list. What a depressing list. Am I right? I mean, who's excited to talk about all of that for the next nine months? Or excuse me, for the next month, not the next nine months, next month. Who's excited to just, this is December, right? Um, well, here, here's the deal, okay? Here's the deal. This, that's real life, right? I mean, that's the life kind of we've been in for the last, this is what it's going to be like here probably in, in some way, shape, or form for um, the next month as well, okay? So this is real life, and, and God's going to show up in this. He will. He will. God, God meets us in these places. I mean, he did 2,000 years ago, and he's going to do it again here in, in, in 2020. And, and really, that's why I'm excited about this series, and that's why I think you should stop Google searching. Um, 
Because here's, here's what I want you to know. God's going to show up in our unmet expectations. God's going to show up in our pain. God's going to show up in our uncertainty. God's going to show up in our unfaithfulness. And, and we just want you to know how to participate with what he's doing as he shows up with you where you actually are. So let's jump into it this weekend together as we talk about God uh, meeting us in our unmet expectations. And uh, as we do, just turn your Bibles uh, to Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1 is where we're going to be. Um, as you find that, let me just tell you a few things about Luke and um, his book and, and just kind of who he was as a person. Uh, first thing is this, Luke was a Gentile, meaning, meaning this, he didn't grow up in church. Uh, he was an outsider who came to know Jesus a little bit later in life. Second, Luke was a doctor. Luke was a doctor. He was educated in a very scientific mind. He was a very good writer. Um, so, so the question is this, how did a doctor who didn't grow up in the church uh, come to write something that 2,000 years later all of us consider to be holy scripture, the very words of God? Well, here's the third thing about Luke that kind of explains that. What Luke did is he traveled with the Apostle Paul on some of his missionary journeys. Uh, Luke got a front row seat to the birth of the church. <laughs> Uh, across the globe. And, and, and Luke met everybody that Paul got to meet, including some of the very people who walked and talked with Jesus himself. And so what Luke does is he decides he's going to write about it. He's going to write about his experience, and he's going to write first for a guy named Theophilus, who probably commissioned him to write. Um, but secondly, now we benefit from it. So here's, here's what Luke says at the beginning of his work, starting in verse 3, and then we're going to get to verse 4. Um, he says, with this in mind, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I too decided to write an orderly account for you, most excellent Theophilus. And then we get to verse 4 and where, where Luke says this. He says, so that you may know the certainty of the things you've been taught. Okay, so right off the top, before Luke gets to anything else, uh, here's what he wants Theophilus and the rest of us to know. Um, in a world of unmet expectations, there's some things that you can just expect from God. There's some things that you can just count on. Now, Luke hasn't told us what those are exactly, but this is the whole point of him writing to us. He wants us to know in a world of unmet expectations, there's some things that you can just expect from God. There's some things you can just count on from God, some things that you can really rest your life on, especially especially when, when everything else that we have a tendency to, to take for granted seems to be failing us. Now listen, I, I, don't, know, I don't know what the last nine months of your life has, has looked like uh, in terms of unmet expectations. I'm sure there's a, there's a few. Um, uh, for me, I felt pretty fortunate, pretty fortunate relative to what I know some of your experience has been like. But here's my family's list. Here's my family's extended list of unmet expectations from these last nine months, okay? Canceled spring break trip, remember that? Some of us were there. Uh, for us, my wife and I canceled 14th wedding anniversary trip, um, canceled summer vacation, uh, no end of year, no end of school year celebrations, uh, uh, my son had a 10th birthday. It was kind of a milestone birthday. That one looked weird. Um, uh, my, my parents had a 40th wedding anniversary trip that was all planned, and all of us were going to go and celebrate them and, and also celebrate my mom's 60th birthday party at the same time. That got canceled. But, but you know, of all of those, and all those are, are real important, guys, canceled Yankees-White Sox game in Iowa, you know? Oh, I mean, the rest of them, kind of a bummer, but really... <laughs> No, come on. And then finally, you know, for us, it's a canceled trip home for Christmas, right? That's our, that's our list. Now, that's a pretty fortunate list, honestly, because um, some of you have, have, uh, have had to cancel high school or college graduations, you know, 13 years of work, K through 12, and now you're not getting able, you weren't able to celebrate. Uh, some of you haven't been able to see your, your parents or grandparents um, because of quarantining or outbreaks in assisted living. And you're kind of wondering, maybe, maybe this, the last Thanksgiving or the last Christmas I was going to have with them isn't going to happen. Um, some of us have had to have virtual weddings. Some of us have had to have, uh, had to have virtual funerals. And there's just a whole host of other things that, that none of us expected to deal with here, Okay. It was the same way back in Luke's day when he was writing. People then 
we're dealing with unmet expectations as well. And so I, I just want to walk through some of the unmet expectations that the folks uh, back then were, were kind of dealing with. This, this first one's from Luke 1, 5 through 7. He says, in the time of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah. So a priest, a, a, a pastor, so to speak. Uh, and he belonged to the priestly division of Abijah. His Wife Elizabeth was also a descendant of Aaron. Um, both of them were righteous in the sight of God, observing all the Lord's commands and decrees blamelessly. So, so Zechariah and Elizabeth, great couple, ministry couple, godly couple, righteous couple, good people, right? But they were childless because Elizabeth was not able to conceive and they were both very old. Window had closed. Okay? Really godly people um, just couldn't, couldn't have a kid. Probably not what they expected when they said, I do. Okay. Jump down to verse 26 with me. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now when we say virgin, that, that, that really kind of means a, a young woman engaged to be married. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Safe to say, this young, uh, engaged woman um, didn't expect a direct message from God. Uh, kind of troubling. And, and it actually gets even more so for her. It says, but the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You found favor with God. Okay, okay. It's going to be a good message, not a bad message. Great. You're going to conceive and give birth to a son. Awesome. Wow, this is a great day. And you're to call him Jesus. Okay, okay. I don't get to pick my son's name, but, but sure, if God says, okay. Uh, he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. Okay. Uh, the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he'll reign over Jacob's descendants forever, and his kingdom will never end. Oh, how will this be? <laughs> <laughs> Mary asked the angel, since, since, I'm a, since I'm a virgin, right? Like, just think about like all of these succession uh, of just um, amazing things and then like weird things and like confusing things that God is saying about how your, how your marriage is going to start and how, you're, how you as a first mom is going to be and how is you, you as a wife is going to be, you know? I mean, her first few days as a, as a wife and mom are not going to look at all like she expected. So that's Mary, right? That's how Mary's expectations were upended. Let's check in on Joseph. Let's check in on her fiance, okay? This is how Matthew puts it in his gospel account. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, okay, before they consummated their marriage, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Huh. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Probably not how Joseph expected his engagement to go either. You know, with his wife pregnant, much less her explanation of how and why, right? Oh, this was God? Sh sure, sure it was. Um, and we don't have time to cover all of the other unmet expectations these folks had to deal with as the very first Christmas unfolded. I mean, Joseph and Mary had to travel back to their hometown with Mary very, 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 very pregnant um, and, 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 and not, be, not on a plane, right, um, on, a, on a donkey. Uh, the city was packed. There was no rooms available. I'm sure that's not what they expected for their, for their birth story, right? Um, the governor of the area was threatened by the story of their firstborn child. And so they had to flee. They, they didn't raise their little baby son, Jesus, for the first couple of years around their family. I'm sure that's not what they expected. So just think about this, okay? Think about this. If the very first Christmas required the people in the very center of God's story, okay? This is Joseph and Mary. If the very first Christmas required the people in the very center of God's story to deal with unmet expectations, then <laughs> why would it be any different for us today? Why would it be any different? Hey, if you're dealing with unmet expectations here at Christmas, you're in good company, <laughs> my friends. I mean, welcome to the family. Let me just say something real obvious to you, and some of you are still wrestling with this, and in case you're still wrestling, let me just settle the wrestle for you. Christmas will not be what you expect this year. 
It just won't. And for some of us, that's, that's pretty difficult. It's pretty frustrating. And for those of us, it's more than that. It's, it's painful. But don't think for a second that God isn't present in that. Get, get this, okay? Following God means following Him through seasons of unmet expectations. That's what following God means. It's not the opposite. It's not the opposite, okay? Following God does not mean that you get the life that you always wanted. It doesn't mean that. Anyone who tells you that is either mistaken or they're lying or more likely they're trying to sell you something. In fact, in fact, Sometimes this is primarily what it means. Like sometimes this is the point. Sometimes God purposely brings you to these places because that's where he wants you to be. He wants you to teach and he wants you to show you something. Now, don't get me wrong, okay? There are seasons of blessing with God. Um, there are seasons of peace with God. There are seasons of prosperity with God. An overall life with God is just plain better than life without him. But, but following God also means following him through unmet expectations. It just does. You know, it means that your life isn't always going to work, work out like, like you thought or like you wanted or like you think it should or like you imagine it would. If God was, you know, near, powerful, good, okay? You will absolutely come to points in your life, crucial points, painful points, uh, gut-checking, gut-wrenching points, where it seems like God is just not coming through for you. You know, that if God were real, uh, things would be different. That, that if God loved you, he'd meet your reasonable expectations. There'll be points like that. And at, and at those points, at those points, you will be faced with this question. This question, will I continue to chase after God or will I start to chase after my own expectations? Right? And, and, and maybe as you read that question, the light bulb's going on for you. Because for the very first time you're realizing this, God and my expectations, not the same thing, are they? They're just not. So you're going to have to choose sometimes. Sometimes not, but sometimes you will. Just like Zechariah and Elizabeth did, just like Mary did, just like Joseph did. And I think what's so amazing about these men and women in this, in this first Christmas story is this. With, with all of their expectations on the line, okay, their engagement, their wedding day, their hopes for a child of their own, their reputation, their very safety, their very lives, with all of that on the line, and all of their expectations for how all of that should go. Reasonable expectations, right? Even when those expectations were not met, they followed God through it. And what I want to do is just, I want to look at Mary and Joseph specifically here before we're done this weekend. I think there's a couple of things in their example that are going to be helpful to us as we're faced with some of the same decisions and choices and some of the same seasons of unmet expectations. What did they do and why did they do it and how, what can we learn as we navigate some of the same things? So I want to look at Mary's story first. Remember, um, she just got some news that completely upended her expectations for being a first time wife and mom. Okay. Completely upended it. God said she was going to have a son, but not with her husband. So just remember from Luke 134, and then we'll keep reading. How will this be, Mary? Asked the angel, since I'm a virgin, how's this going to work? Okay. Well, the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And then even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who is said to be unable to conceive is now in her sixth month. And get how this ends. This is what the angel says. For no word from God will ever fail. And now look at Mary's response. I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, may your word to me be fulfilled. And then the angel left her. 
So just in case you're wondering, okay, yes, this absolutely sounded just as crazy to Mary's ears as this news first hit her as it does to yours and mine. Uh, don't for a second think that just because Mary lived 2,000 years ago that she had no idea how the birds and bees worked, okay? Um, she, she knew how it all, all worked. And hey, kids, if you're watching with mom and dad right now and you're in the room, uh, babies come from mommy's tummy because mommy and daddy love each other a lot, okay? And if mom and dad want to sell you more um, after church this morning, uh, good luck. How about that? Um, but but look, at what, <laughs> look at what God says to Mary. Just one, one more time here, okay? He goes, my words don't fail. My words don't fail. They never fail, okay? If I said it, God's, God says, if I said it, it's true. If I declare it, it's going to happen. And this is what's so incredible about Mary's response because after God says this to her through the angel, Mary completely and immediately shifts. No more questions about her being a virgin. No more questions about if and how it's all going to work out. No, she has a very simple response. May your word to me be fulfilled. So here's what I think Mary's living out for all of us as she followed God through her own unmet expectations. Here's the principle. God's faithfulness to us rests on his promises to us, and we have every right to expect God to be faithful to his promises, even when he doesn't meet our own expectations. God's faithfulness to us rests on his promise to us. Remember, God and my expectations, not the same thing. Because what? God didn't promise you a great Christmas with your family. That's not a promise he made to you. He didn't promise you health or comfort. He didn't promise that, that your life's going to work out the way that you wanted. He didn't promise that it was going to be easy. But you know what he did promise you? You know what he did declare? You know what will absolutely be true is that if you believe in Jesus, your sins are forgiven. If you, if you believe in Jesus, you are in his family. And there's nothing that can ever take you out of that. He, you can believe and he promised you that he'll be with you forever and until your dying day, he will give you every day, every single day, exactly what you need. Those are the promises God's made to all of us who stepped across that line of faith and have trusted Jesus. And if he said that, we can count on those because no word from God ever fails. See, Christmas may not look like what you expected. 2020 didn't look like what we expected, and it's not gonna. <laughs> Things aren't gonna get magically better in this next month, and it's not gonna redeem the whole thing. Nope. Here it is. It's not gonna look like what we expected, but what we can expect is for God to be faithful to his promises to us. Like Mary, you and I can say, God, may your word to us be fulfilled. That's Mary, okay? That's how she followed God through unmet expectations. Now, how about Joseph? What happened uh, after he learned his fiance was pregnant and it wasn't his? Remember, his first instinct was to what? Just divorce her quietly, right? From Matthew 120, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because... What is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, right? She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they'll call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now take a look at how this ends. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. And he took Mary home as his wife, but he didn't consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Are you starting to see why God picked Mary and Joseph? Mary was this woman who had this incredible faith in God. Incredible faith in God. If God said it, she believed it. That's who she was. She just expected it to happen. And Joseph... Joseph did this often overlooked and underestimated, but unbelievably powerful thing. He simply did what God told him to do. That was it. Here's what we can learn from that, okay? Even when God doesn't meet your expectations, continue to meet his. 
even when, let me say that again, even when God does not meet your expectations, my friends, we have to, we should, it's the best for us if we continue to meet God's expectations. Obeying God is always important. It always is. But especially when you feel like God's disappointing you, that's when it's most important to obey him. What if, what if, Joseph, what if Joseph had said, um, nah, nah, no, not, not doing that, God. That sounds horrible. <laughs> I mean, what if he had said, hey, you're on your own, Mary. I know what you said. I had a weird dream, but this is not what I signed up for. Uh, good luck. I mean, can you imagine that? Can you imagine that? Can you imagine the impact on the, on the story if Joseph had, had done that? And yet, and yet, how many of us, when it gets hard, how, how many of us, when we feel like God is not keeping up his end of the bargain, uh, when, when, when God's not meeting our expectations, how many of us see those times as all the justification we need for not meeting God's expectations? You know, hey, you don't want to do what I want you to do, God? Well, fine, guess what? I'm not going to do what you want me to do. Everyone around you this Christmas, everyone around you this Christmas, even followers of Jesus, even people you think should know better, everyone around you is probably going to feel more permission to just kind of let it all hang out this Christmas. I think that's true. Why? Because, because why? Because we're tired of trying to have a good attitude. Nine months of this stuff. We're, we're tired, okay? We're, we're tired of trying to remain positive. Uh, we're tired of not being in control. We're tired of having to make concessions. We're, we're, we're tired of being told what we can and can't do. Everyone around you is going to feel more permission than they normally do to just fall short of what they know God desires. Everyone around you, okay? What would Christmas look like if you did it, what would Christmas look like if you didn't just let it all hang out? What would Christmas look like if you didn't just give yourself permission to fall short? What would Christmas look like if you were the only one around the table, around the Zoom call, in the living room, who was quick to listen and slow to speak? Remember that? Quick, slow, slow. Just like God commanded. What if you were obedient in that way? What would Christmas look like if, if you were the one who sought to serve instead of be served like Jesus commanded? What would Christmas look like if you were the encouraging voice in your family, in your circle, rather than the one who had to be encouraged? What would Christmas look like? I tell you what it would look like. It would look like the first Christmas. Look like the one we just read about. If you expect God to keep his promises to you, okay? And if you simply obey what he's telling us to do, if you do those two things, just like Mary and Joseph, you're going to be welcoming Jesus into your world. which is the entire point of Christmas. Because just like Jesus came into a world of unmet expectations 2,000 years ago, he wants to come into ours today. And we cannot be a community of people who are so focused on our own expectations that we miss the arrival of Jesus. Let me do this, okay? Let me just... Pray to that end. And one last time, okay? Merry Christmas. All right, let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you for this word, this reminder. Uh, God, thank you for this series. Uh, thank you, God, that we uh, live in a world of unmet expectations because of the opportunity that it gives you to show up in our lives and God, maybe through us and the lives of the people that we love around us who maybe even don't, don't even know you. 
So God, this week, would, would you just continue to remind us of the opportunities like that when we're sensing our own expectations, kind of unmet expectations, kind of creep up? Or, or, or God, we're, we're seeing the lives of those around us and we're sad and we're, we're disappointed and we're frustrated and we're angry. God, will we see those moments as opportunities for you to kind of come through and for us to be reminded of who you are, what you've promised us, and God, as opportunities to just obey what you've told us. And we really, God, this season, we want Jesus to get all of the glory. So it's in his name we pray all of this. Amen.